Hey guys, my name is Kevin. I'm one of the exercise specialists with the West Primary Care Network and today we're here to talk about benefits of exercise and how that ties into motivation. So as exercise specialists, our role in the healthcare system is basically to use exercise and to help people you, uh, do exercise in order to help them get healthier in a variety of different ways. Now when people come in to see us, they're usually coming in for one or two reasons. Like their doctor's referral will say high blood pressure, or chronic pain, or new diagnosis of diabetes. Any of these things, it's our job to prescribe the proper amount of exercise um, that would be appropriate for that person to help them with that condition. What I'm gonna try and portray to you today is the fact that this medication, um, the side effects of it are pretty much all positive. So when we get people exercising regularly, uh, their whole life gets better in a lot of different ways. And I want to make you understand and realize uh, the different effects that exercise can have on your life. So um, I've highlighted two in red. These are two really common referrals that we get, um, but we, we get them for all of them from, from your family doctor. But let's just say, um, somebody wants to lose weight or their family doctors had a discussion with them about losing weight so they want to come in and exercise for it or a new diagnosis of diabetes um, they want to start exercising to better control their blood sugars now when someone starts exercising um, the thing is that all these other benefits come along with it it's you think about a, a typical medication like a, a blood sugar medication or blood pressure for uh, high blood pressure um, when people take these medications, oftentimes there's, there's a therapeutic benefit for sure, but oftentimes there's side effects and they're negative side effects. The cool thing about exercise is that if you are doing exercise for the one reason, all these other things are going to come along with it. So um, we teach classes, uh, two different classes, one's called Active Living for Everyone, one's our triage class. And in both of those classes, we go over the benefits of exercise. So I want to go over these today uh, as I can um, usually see people kind of change and get motivated when we do this slide in the class. So about 20 minutes of walking every day will lower your blood pressure, uh, roughly equivalent to a medication um, at, a, at a moderate pace. Blood pressure medication only really works for 24 hours, maybe up to 48 hours, and then your blood pressure goes back to normal. Walking is the same thing. When you go for a walk, your blood pressure go, actually goes up during the walk and then it goes down for 24 to 48 hours after. So if you want to sustain that therapeutic benefit, you need to go for a walk every day for blood pressure. Increased muscle mass. Um, if we get people exercising, whether it's walking or biking, we won't usually build muscle mass with that. We need to do weight training or strength training, but that's certainly a benefit. As you pass the age of about 40 to 45, you lose about 1% of your muscle mass per year. So it's a very important part of our guidelines. We should be lifting weights at least two times per week. Uh, lower blood sugar. Um, so think of blood sugar or the sugar in your blood as your fuel for exercise. Like I'll tell people it's like gas in your, in your tank. Um, when you exercise, like walk or bike or swim, uh, cardio exercise, it mostly just burns the sugar. And when we do weightlifting, it does burn the sugar, but more so, it improves our insulin sensitivity. So what that means, if you've ever, if you're diabetic or if you've ever heard of the uh, expression insulin resistance, it's basically your body is not using the insulin that you're producing as well anymore. What we find is when people exercise and when, especially when people lift weights, their body uses insulin more effectively, thereby reducing their blood sugars. So um, if we can make that insulin that you're still producing work better, then your blood sugars will be lower over the course of the day. Lower cholesterol uh, can help lower LDL cholesterol and increase HDL cholesterol. Um, increased bone density. Think about your bones as um, sponges, basically. Uh, that's, that's more or less what the inside of your bone looks like. The more we load um, bones, the more our body reacts and puts calcium into the bones and makes it stronger. Your body releases a hormone called calcitonin and that actually increases the density in the bone. When I was in university, I remember this as calcibone in 
and that's basically taking calcium out of your blood and putting it into your bones to make them stronger. We do that by loading them. If you don't exercise, if you don't lift weights, then your body will basically, those, uh, that sponge is going to become a lot more hollow inside uh, versus if you strength train, that's going to be a strong bone. Uh, cancer. So there's 13 different types of cancer that can um, either be uh, exercise can reduce your chance of developing cancer, and it really, really, really helps in the or the treatment of cancer in terms of keeping people's energy levels up during their treatment. Most common ones are um, colon cancer and breast cancer. Those are probably the top two uh, that are related to exercise. Blood platelet adhesiveness, so decrease in blood platelet adhesive. If you think about adhesive, it means sticky. So basically exercise will reduce your chance of developing blood clots. Um, regular exercise essentially makes your blood less sticky. Less clots is a good thing. Low back pain. A lot of people when they develop low back pain um, tend to sit or lay down or not move because their back hurts. Quite often we need to do the opposite. You need appropriate movement and load to help your back loosen up. Oftentimes your back muscles are described as tight and weak. So what we need to do is movement will help them loosen up and then after they loosen up then we need to make them stronger. Uh, less pain from arthritis. Uh, people are often afraid of a diagnosis of arthritis. I have no cartilage left in my knee. My surgeon told me I'm bone on bone. Um, all those things like may be true, but in the treatment of arthritis, what we know is the stronger the muscles are around the joint, the less pain you're going to have. I've had people with severe tricompartmental, which means all three compartments have no cartilage and the person could walk for over an hour. This person cycled for two hours, three times a week. Their legs were super strong, but they had no cartilage and they had very little pain. So. It's very, very relative to how strong you are, I find. Increased lung function. Um, uh, conditions like COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, um, they won't get fixed by exercise, but what we find is that the more we use uh, exercise as our medication, the lungs just work more effectively and they are better at extracting oxygen out of the air. Increased fitness is kind of a general term, it's across the board, um, that you just feel like you have more energy. Uh, you feel like you are more fit, you can do more stuff. So that's an obvious side effect of being regularly active. And then decrease in weight. So quite often people exercise in order to um, lose weight. And what we find is for the most part, if people only do exercise for weight loss, uh, quite often they will lose about two and a half to three pounds of fat and they'll gain about two to two and a half pounds of muscle. So overall it looks like they lost a pound or half a pound which isn't very good um, in their mind but really they have lost, um, they, they think they've only lost half a pound but they've actually lost three pounds of fat, gained two pounds of muscle. Their body's a lot more healthy. So think about well, I, I usually encourage people to not have weight loss as their target. If they're exercising regularly, they've already won because they have all these side effects. Mental health, um, decreased anxiety and depression. So um, exercise um, of about 45 minutes three times a week at a moderate intensity is equivalent to anxiety and depress, uh, antidepressants uh, medications. So um, I'll have another video that's, that's more specifically diving into mental health, but those two specifically, um, exercise can help you right away. Um, typically it will act on your mood right away and for anxiety and depression, it'll take probably three to four weeks to really notice benefits. So if you don't notice a benefit in, um, in your uh, depression or in your anxiety, give it a couple weeks. Uh, as it takes, same, same as medication, if you start taking an anti-anxiety or an antidepressant, it usually takes a couple weeks to kick in. Exercise is the same, same deal. Um, improved mood, those can be noticed right away. Your brain releases serotonin and can release endorphins, and both of those will immediately increase your mood. 
you want to give this a try, um, it needs to be longer than 10 minutes in duration, but go out for a walk, go do some kind of exercise, and immediately after you're done, evaluate how you feel. Decrease stress. During stressful times, exercise is usually the first thing to go, but it's actually the probably our best coping mechanism for whatever the stressful event is. Quite often, we will feel like we've lost control, um, like we don't know what to do, and exercise just has an effect on your brain that you feel more in control of, of your outcomes, and you will feel like you can manage a stressful situation better, uh, even though you've only really exercised and your stressful situation hasn't changed, but it just feels different to you. Increased self-efficacy is you feel better. You feel like you can do stuff. You, you are good at a skill, basically. Um, Self-efficacy just means like, can you do something? Um, so in our ex supervised exercise programs, we teach people how to exercise. By the end of it, they've learned a new skill. They know how to do this now. So they, there kind of are some feelings of pride that come along with that. Self-esteem, very, very tied in, but they just feel better about themselves. Uh, I had a friend who his wife came to, uh, like I was just having a conversation with his wife, and um, uh, apparently a couple weeks prior, she had said to him, like, I want, I want my husband to start working out again. So over the last couple of weeks, um, my friend started working out and then he came up to me and he's like, Kev, look at my pecs, look at my arms, look how strong I am. And I went to his wife later, I was like, he doesn't look any different to me. And she's like, I know, I don't think he looks any different either, but he acts differently. He acts like he's strong, he acts like he's powerful, he's, he's got self-esteem. Um, and that's a bigger effect, so that's probably one of the most important effects I think of exercise is you feel like you can take on the world. You feel like Hercules. When you've done it, probably at least three or four weeks, you start to notice those mental health changes that overall you just feel better. Decreased chance of uh, dementia and Alzheimer's, um, and then increased concentration. You might notice if you're sitting in the chair for a long time, um, you're not able to focus anymore. Uh, get up and walk around. What I, the example I give to people is your brain is creating metabolic waste so um, getting up and walking around is like bringing in oxygen and blood sugar into your brain. It's like bringing in the groceries and bringing out the garbage um, out of your head. The metabolic waste would be the garbage. Other ones would be increased energy. People who are regularly active just feel like they have more energy. If you think about someone in your life that's like that uh, Energizer Bunny or just full of spunk, quite often they're quite fit individuals because if you're fit, the things you do in a day don't tire you out. If you're unfit, doing simple tasks like doing the laundry or going to see your doctor will tire you out, so therefore you have no energy left. You need to commit to a regular exercise program. As your fitness level increases, you're going to feel like you have more energy. Improve sleep. If you lay on the couch all day, your body and your brain don't have much of a reason to give you good sleep. If you think about last time you went to Disneyland or if you helped a friend move or something like that, um, your head hits the pillow and you're out cold. So um, improved sleep is a really good benefit of, uh, of exercise. Increased abilities. Um, one lady I can use as an example, she had really bad knee pain um, from knee arthritis. She was going on a trip uh, to Europe and she was afraid that she wasn't going to be able to do all the things that she wanted to do. So uh, during one of our programs, we got her leg really, really strong. Her symptoms went down and she said that she, there's no way she could have done all the things that she did and she did them without pain because she was strong and didn't have much pain. So you can just do more stuff if you're physically fit. Uh, if you're physically unfit, you're, you're going to have more limitations on what you can and can't do. Decreased risk of falls. More, more physically active people have a lower risk of falls. Uh, increased independence. You're going to maintain your independence for longer. Uh, and then my most important piece is quality of life. That's why it's labeled in blue is my motivation. I don't really... Uh, the number of years that I have are not as important to me as the quality of my years. So I don't want my last couple of years to be... Uh, struggling with no energy and independent on people. I basically want to be in a really good place and then fall off a cliff. Uh, so quality of life is 
largely determined by your fitness level. So back to the beginning, uh, realize that when you exercise, you are getting about 40 different benefits. I know it's really hard to do, but if you exercise for this reason, you also get all these other things. This is truly the best medication that you can take. And um, I know it's really hard to include in your day-to-day -day life, but it's worthwhile to do so. The quality of your life is gonna be so much better if you do include this in your life. A uh, quote I heard recently is, um, if you do what is easy, your life will be hard. If you do what is hard, your life will be easy. So if you choose to exercise, if you choose to invest this time, the other 16 hours a day that you're awake is gonna be a lot easier and better. Uh, it is totally worthwhile to do. I know it's hard, but you need to fit it into your day if you wanna have an easier life and a better quality of life. So start with 10 minutes, start with low intensity, and over time gradually increase how much time you're spending per day or per, per week being active, uh, and then gradually increase the intensity as well. Okay, this has been Benefits of Exercise. Thanks for watching.